How y'all doing today, man? Yeah, we sure. love you guys, man. This is Give Them Heaven Podcast, man. Me, Brother Twan, Brother brother Nesto. Let me go ahead and bring my squad. I want to introduce my brother, man. Hold up now. Let me see. Hey, what's up, man, the guy? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can y'all hear Nesto? Everybody hear each other? I can hear you. I can't hear nobody else. <laughs> Come on, man. We, we got 300 viewers on right now. Just giving everybody a time to kick in. I see YouTube. I see Facebook. What's up, y'all? In the Amen. name of God Jesus. Bless everybody. Everybody share this right now. Share this on your post. Share this. This is going to be beautiful. We're about to be announcing some things you're going to be a part of and what's going on. Let me share this on my regular man. page. Let me share this on the community page. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Can y'all hear Ernesto? Everybody here loud and clear? Let me see. Yup. Check, check, check. Can you hear me, Twan? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Amen. I can smell you. I smell <laughs> repentance and I smell salvation all over you. <laughs> God is so good, y'all. You drinking coffee? You drinking coffee, bro? Yes, sir. Damn. I'm getting, I'm getting bro. Yeah, they, <laughs> everybody at can hear. At night. <laughs> I only got, I only got, 
Only got an hour and 15 minutes after I drink this coffee before I got to get off the lot. <laughs> <I> <laughs> <laughs> this is beautiful. This is beautiful, y'all. Check it out. I'm going to go ahead and go in through prayer. The Bible says, so then prepare your hearts and minds for action. For action. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Stay alert and fix your hope firmly on the marvelous grace that is coming to you. For when Jesus Christ is unveiled, a greater measure of grace will be released to you. Mm -hmm. As God's obedient children, never again shape your lives by the desires that you followed when you didn't know any better. Instead, shape your lives to become like the Holy One who called you. For Scripture says you are to be holy because I am holy. Father God, I love you and I thank you for this. Just another day to gather around with my brothers and just honor you, Lord. I thank you for everything you entrusted us with, from the influence to the platform to your cheap, Lord, to the to finances, to health, Father, relationships that you've given us, Lord. And um, we honor you. Uh, you didn't have to, but you gave so much to us. You've done enough for us, and we love you. And we welcome you, Holy Spirit, in these conversations and our plans, and we ask for your favor. We thank you for mercy. Yes, I pray right now that you just let the blood of Christ cleanse us of anything that's not of you right now. Everyone who is listening, Father God, let the blood of Christ just make everybody have a clear conscience. And as we plan and we speak about vision and we speak about things that you place on our heart to do, Lord, in sharing uh, the vision with the people, Father God, I pray that they catch the vision, that they participate, and those who can help will help as we all lock arms to do one yes, thing God. to bring you glory to win souls lord to bring people from death unto life for those who are dead for them to come alive father god for those areas in their life that seem dry for it to have a newness father god a wholeness and a health lord so thank you for so much thank you for all that you do in the name of jesus christ of nazareth we pray amen 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 Hey man, y'all, so today, man, on Give Him Heaven Podcast, we're going to be speaking about this beautiful thing that we have in one of our departments called SWAP, and um, and and don't forget the forgotten. And these are two the, uh, the, uh, from the nonprofit. It's uh, uh, the prison ministry, and it's the service with a purpose ministry, and uh, we actually got both of our directors here. Uh, Ernesto is the director of Don't Forget the Forgotten, and Tuan is the director of, um, he handles the operation when it comes to the swap. So we're going to be speaking on our next swap and and actually, uh, don't forget the forgotten uh, intertwining, right? Because we're going to the prison too, right? Yeah, they're gonna be. I think they're gonna run. They're gonna coincide with each other on the same weekend. One of these weekends coming up. And what? How? Uh, to speak about the date. What's going on? These so, dates? Um, so, so first of all, for those that don't know, I'm Antoine Hill from this ministry, Kingdom Music Ministry, man. And um, from day one, who would have known? Like, who would have <laughs> known? Right? Who would have known that we would be? You know, we didn't know what what this ministry was gonna be. We were just some young dudes excited to be saved, doing music for the Lord, the gift that, that God gave us, right? Well, but, you actually knew. You told me in the car one day you had a dream, and I well, laughed yeah. at you. He did? Well, it was so, so, uh, it was, <laughs> it was random. But it was look, hard to believe at the time. I'll right? share, I'll share, I'll share the dream. Like, this is before anybody that knows anything about Kenny. We, like I said, we was just, we was just younger. Yeah. Um. Saved. Excited. Wu was still alive. Wu was still alive. Me, Brian, Wu, Monica were just man, just you know, in this little room doing music to the Lord. We knew how to rap, and so we was just rapping to the glory of God. Man, we was just passing CDs out and music out. Anyway, I like that. Someone said A Hill was the reason I gave up secular music. Man, come on, man. That's that, come that's on, a man. Amen. That, man, I'm gonna get into that. Don't yeah, that would get into that. That that excites me to even see. So we was just doing music. And um, and I, I had no idea. Honestly, I didn't think like I wasn't like picturing us traveling and doing music for the Lord. In fact, I didn't even know that that was a real thing like that. Right. Like I knew a couple of Christian rappers, but I didn't know much. Mm -hmm. And one night I had a dream. And in the dream, um, we were on stage in front of a whole bunch of people. Yeah. And um. I couldn't tell what we were doing, but we were we were casting demons out. Actually, mm. that's what was going on in the dream, and it was a big crowd, and it was praying, and it was casting demons out, and praying for people, and all kind of different things. And we were all standing up there together. And I woke up the next day, and I told Brian about it. I said, "Man, God was showing me like we were going to be up in front of people." Now I didn't know like details, like the the. I just knew that we were preaching. I didn't know details of like everything that we'd be doing, music and this and that. I had no idea. Yeah. And but I just shared it with Brian, and Brian was like, "Yeah, <laughs> he ain't even really acknowledge what I said." It's really crazy because like Wu told me the same thing, and I, I did the same thing to him. I was like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah." So we I, we, I, we didn't know. The truth is, we weren't even doing it for that. We were just trying to. We were just excited to be saved and 
you know, we were just passing CDs out and music out and stuff. So I, a reason the reason why we even got into that is because I, I look up now and I say, who would have known that God would give us the opportunity to do some of these different things? Not just go travel and do music, but God was God would put something in our hands and say, I'm going to trust you with this. I want you to take yeah. what, whatever you have. I want you to go out into the communities. I want you to bless them with food. I want you to bless them with funds. I want you to help people pay their rent. I want you to help the people pay their bills. I want you to give people clothes and shoes yeah. and um, um, you know, school supplies and meet their needs and food and supply them with all these different things. And you know, when God really started, you know, doing that with us, he gave, listen, here, this is how good God is. It started off small, right? Yeah. Brian would be like, man, I got a few hundred dollars. Let's go feed the, let's go feed the block. And we'll take 200, 300, 400 dollars that we just had. And we, it started off with us making peanut butter, jelly sandwiches and waters and hygiene. fruit and hygiene and just go, just going out and just passing it out to who, whoever was in need. And then God started growing it more and more. And he started being like, okay, now I want you to go feed a thousand people. And we'd be like, well, how are we going to do that? Yeah. And so when God gave us this. We were um, like match a blanket, match a sock, remember? Yeah, we would just go, you know, for, you know, we would get people say, hey, I want to give $200, $300, go get some more blankets. And, so, and we would go by ourselves to Walmart all night long. Buy all the blankets we could buy, man. People would be looking at us like, what y'all been doing with all them blankets? And, you know, we'd be having blankets and beanies and, and we just... Just believed in whatever we had, yep. we would use to go be a blessing to other people. Always reminding every single person that got something from us that we didn't do this, but God provided. That Jesus cared enough about him that he sent us out to go do it. And so when I look up and I see what we're doing and where we're at, it's crazy because now we're doing bigger events. What I mean by that is more people, more places. And with that, um, we're trusting God, right? Um, it don't matter. It, you know, at the end of the day, we we know that we need to buy the help. But yeah. no matter what we have, we're going to use what we have to do everything that we can. Yep. And so, um, you know, we're grateful for that. So that's what got us to this point. We start to put together these bigger um, events. And with that came um, the, that money that, you know, a lot of, you know, sometimes church people think is a cuss word when you bring it up. Uh, money. Money was involved that we needed in order to do these different things because we started, people started saying, hey, come to my neighborhood, which is what we're going to talk about right now. Ernesto wanted us to come to Houston. He's been saying, hey, come to Houston, come to Houston. Um, you know, and the truth of the matter is it takes funds for us to go to different cities and plan these things out and all, you know, and travel and gas and all these different things. So, you know, we were like, listen, if it's people that believe in um, what we're trying to do in the name of Jesus, what God's trying to do through the ministry. Um, why not, why not say, Hey, body of Christ, um, there's an opportunity to partner with us. No amount is too little and no amount is too big. Um, we got plenty of places that we know where to put it and, 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 and neighborhoods to go to. Yep. Um, and so that's what brought us to today. So now we have, um, we're literally a month away. Yep. Not even that. Um, April 13th, we're going to be in Houston um, and we're going to be doing service with a purpose there. And we're going to be giving out um, food. We, we're trying to give out as many groceries as we can, clothing, um, anything that would be a help to anybody who needs it. You don't have to be homeless to need help. Yeah. Let me just take you, I'm, I'm going to take you back one time and then I'm going to quit talking. When I was a kid, you know, I know everybody has their different uh, views on Christmas, all oh, pagan holiday. At the end of the day, I was a kid who didn't know who Jesus was. But Christmas was, uh, you know, we just thought it was about gifts. And my mom used to take me, my sister Monica, my brother DeAndre and TJ, and we would go down to this church. And the church would give us all a few toys. And that would be sometimes be our only uh, gifts we got for Christmas. I've been there. Um, so um, I see the importance of the church. Y'all might think there's nothing like, oh, you got a few toys when you were. To well, when you weren't getting anything, you weren't expecting anything and you barely had anything. I something. You looked at the church and said, Damn, that was pretty awesome that um, that they gave us a few things just to you make know. us smile on Christmas because we knew our parents couldn't do it. You know. So we want to do the same thing for um, different people. So April 13th, we're going to be in Houston doing some of the same thing. So that's just a little bit, I won't talk more, but I could talk forever. So I just want to share that part and what service, what a purpose is and what we're doing. So what neighborhood are, are, are we, are, uh, are we strategizing to go into? We're in, we're in Sunnyside, man. Uh, Sunnyside is a, 
a tough neighborhood. For all of you, all of you guys who who are from Houston or or have heard of Houston, uh, I'm pretty sure you've heard of Sunnyside. It's very a lot of gang activity, you know, dope dealing. Uh, there's a lot of drug addiction. It's a, it's a rough area to be at, man. So uh, the, the blessing for us to be able to go and, and make an impact, you know, and bring so this Jesus. Is commu- this is a community uh, a project that we're doing for Swap. It's not gonna Correct. be. It's not gonna be like the. Uh, when we go to the to the homeless, this is gonna be like a community, no, 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 like an apartment, a project, or yes, we're gonna be in an apartment complex Amen. in the middle of Sunnyside, uh, and the idea is to bless that apartment complex. And the managers already uh, agreed to to make a bunch of flyers yes. and pass them out to the community wow. and and do their do some footwork for us, for us as well to to be able to to bring you know as much people as they can into the apartment complex, but. The this, idea is to be a blessing, man. You this know, is to be crazy. a blessing. So, yeah, it's fire, bro. So they brought it up at the board meeting, and I was like, when when they said that, I was like, okay, like uh, this is gonna be a different type of what we wanted. What we want to do is uh, we want to bring grocery bags for the family. Yeah, I want to have family bags for these for this complex. Uh, I would love somebody to say, I match ten bags. What are we gonna put in the bags? I say, uh, what uh, non perishable food items? Uh, yeah. so um, bread, milk, um, cereal, cereal, canned goods, cereal, canned canned goods. goods. Um, yeah, any, yeah. anything that's non perishable, but it's not gonna go bad fast. You know, hygiene, hygiene, hygiene stuff, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Washing yeah. detergent, yeah. all of that. Anything yeah. that we could put in the bag, I would love somebody out there that says, you know what, brother Brian, put me down for three family bags, whatever. And I say each family bag should be like what. Uh, $10, $15, $20 bags? Well, nowadays, $10. $30 Yeah, bags. yeah, you know, <laughs> man, 20 30 be fine. Well, well, yeah, maybe 20, 30, 30 you well, can maybe, probably get bread. Stuff. Maybe 30 yeah. $30 get some bag. bread, yeah. some cereal, you, you some canned goods. You have $30 yeah. bag. Let's say yeah. 30, $30 bag is the mm-hmm. most, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if we can, we can imagine that. Imagine you you get in a knock on the door and someone like, hey, man, we just want to be a blessing. Here goes a family bag. And let me ask you something, B. You know, we all got stories, and I know you share stories. Do you have a story like, you know, when stuff was um, hard, you know, not not necessarily, uh, you know, we all got crime stories and stuff like that. But just st- when, when when just getting a meal was hard, or 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 your clothing, like you know, maybe not being able to clean your clothes, or or, or just anything like you got any stories like that, like just because it, that if service would have purpose would have showed up for you, then would have been helpful. Oh man, if I was young and I'd have seen, I'd have seen some some people that I could relate to, right? That looked that they looked like the, like what what the block looked like, but they yeah. acted. Nothing like the block, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. They, they, they look like they're from our culture. One, I could receive from them because they look like us. Yeah. You know, it when 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 I'm be honest, when when someone strange pulled up in a in in a, it was white dude or something, he had a suit or he had a. I I didn't, I didn't want to think about church. I'm thinking about the feds. I'm thinking yeah, we, about it. Is dude we here. Thought it was the police. This, yeah, yeah, we police. Did. They do here to take kids, but when, <laughs> but they won't. When, 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 kids is crazy. I thought it was, <laughs> it was renaissance. Or everybody get down. <laughs> get down. The of repo man. The repo. <laughs> but uh, Renna Center, uh, but see, sorry, Renna Center, we owe y'all, man. Seeing somebody, <laughs> seeing somebody that look like 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 a Theo and a Theo out there, and be like, man, uh, and and coming in the name of Jesus would have probably touched my heart. Can I tell you something powerful? Yeah, be, yeah. A couple nights ago, this is so crazy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It just just reminded me. A couple nights ago, I don't know why I had this dream, but now I get it. Um, I had a dream that um, me, Brian, a couple of brothers, I could only recognize a couple of faces. We were walking through. We had our what we had on right now, and um, people. Dang, this is so crazy. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just just blew my mind because this dream just. This was like a couple nights ago. I didn't think nothing of it. Um, we're walking through a neighborhood, and people avoided us. They kept walking around us, and it kind of felt embarrassing a little bit because I'm like, dang man, I'm a man of God. Because for some reason, I knew that they were men and women of God. And they, but they were avoiding us, and I was like, man, it, it felt some type of way because I'm like, man, I'm a man of God as well, and they avoided us, and then we came to a group of people, yeah, and the group of people that that we came up to embraced us and asked us like, why do you guys look different? Although we had the same stuff on as them, they asked us why we look different, and we were able to preach the gospel. And in the dream, um, God showed me uh, um, that how we dress would be um, a way that God would use us to um, to speak to those who uh, can relate to us. So it's crazy that you say that because I just had a dream like that a couple nights ago. A lot of people avoided us, but the people that embraced us was from that community that we were in. And they and, and God was showing me, like, the, you know, who you guys uh, are and how you are. Um, I, I made you that way because some um, people will only some people will only and embrace you like that. That's I, crazy. I, I know that to be true. Like, you know, yeah. I, man, can I be honest? 
identity in the church was one thing that that that, that had me kind of re- religion. Yeah. I felt like I okay, I know I gotta be I know I gotta be different, but now somebody wants me to look different. And the way yeah. they wanted me to look wasn't the way I felt like, okay, so I gotta look like this for God to love me, but this ain't even me. Like mm-hmm. I can never wear a hoodie again. I can never wear a fitted hat. Yeah. That, that when he says look like the world, he's not talking about you can't look like way that like the way you came. Like it, you just can't, you just can't look like the world. And when I say look like the world, you look like the world by the way you respond, you look like the yeah. world by the way you speak, yeah. you look like the world by the think. way you think, the way you res- that, all these like the way I look I, I, uh, is the culture I come from. Yeah. And, and you know, and, and God uses us to to pull people from the trenches to point to him to to let them know look if god could say this knucklehead this pachuco this cholo this addict this gang member this dope boy whatever you were if god can save this person and he looks like me he and he looks like he's been where i've been from like man hey then he can he could say there's hope for me too so i believe that's what that's exactly what, what we come to do is let him know hey well it's happened in the prison remember and yeah, the first prison that we went to that yeah. we did yeah we were in road tuning and one of the there was a muslim there bro and he was he's been a muslim for like 10 years and uh uh he said that we look he goes man y'all look like me y'all, mm-hmm. y'all talk like how, how is it that, that 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 y'all are just doing this man and he came up crying to us bro that he wanted to renounce uh the islam his islam religion and become a christian bro so we've seen you know uh the living a living testimony of that let me share something, man. My first experience doing my my well, my experience is doing a uh, service with the purpose and, Tylenol, and y'all. swap, y'all. Yeah. Uh, um, my, <laughs> my experiences, though, um, two things, y'all. Uh, that 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 was heartbreaking. I remember one night we was out there in Dallas, and man, shout out to uh, Pastor Nick and the brothers that were involved in oh, Victory amen. Church. That was a good night. Um, every time we go out there, man, Victory Church, and, and um, when I say they come out there, man, they lock arms. We got like ten thousand dollars worth of food, uh, man, and we're out. And so imagine ten thousand yeah. dollars worth of food and, and stuff combined to what we have. Imagine that. That's a lot, right? Yeah. Well, in the city of Dallas, you know how fast that went. But it was done. It was done. That's ten thousand dollars worth of food. Let me tell you something. It broke my heart that when we was out there at night. That two blankets would barely make somebody warm. Yep. It broke my heart that I would see um, le- un- less fortunate people had to cuddle up just to stay warm, and it hurt me yeah. that we left. And it hurt that like man, this is. I'd be like, here, take another blanket. And then I look at another family. So these things just kept leaving so yeah. fast, and that thing broke my heart. That was the. So I've learned through experiences: get as much as you can get because yep. when you're out there, yep. you're gonna need it. You know what I mean? And then and, and another thing was. Um, Seeing people out there that um just needed a push, they just needed help. That's yeah. all they needed was that one push, and they can bounce right back on their feet. You know, some people were had defeated mindsets, and I get it; those are strongholds. But there were some people out there. I met the most cleanest man out there in Tent City. Everything tents were everywhere, right? But there was this one man I never forget. <laughs> his tent was so organized yep. and clean, and he used to tell me like, "I got a job." I'm, I'm just out here. Like I go to a hotel and shower when I can, when I could, he says, I just need that one push, man. Mm. And I would look at him like, man, I wish I had that, that to give to him at the moment just to help him. You know? So those, those experiences when I was out there was like, um, if, if this, if this thing hangs up, my bad, I'm going to push you right back on Ernesto. But those experiences when I was out there was like, um, I wish I had more. Yeah. Um, I re- I God, I'm, a- I'm asking right now that you send us to the places that we need to be because I know there's everyone needs it in certain cities, but there's certain places that God assigns us to. Yeah. So for you to say Sunnyside, I know this is an assignment God has given you. Yeah. And uh, the last time we went to Houston, it was beautiful, right? We we hit those blocks, didn't we? It was deep. Everybody, we, we overpopulated the, the the community. Remember? Even the dope <laughs> boys uh, stepped aside and let us do what we did. Remember? They're watching us. Uh, the, the 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 ones that are out with their grinding, they were watching, seeing what we're doing. At first, they had yeah. they, they looked like they was bothered, and then when they seen us feeding the people, they let us do our thing. You know what I mean? Amen. Yeah. So you know one that one time that I had that really impacted me was when we used to do it in in Austin after South by Southwest. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. After the, yeah. little out there. Yeah. I took the kids, bro, and I remember we pulled up, and in, 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 I think it was by the Salvation Army, and and what tripped me up was that little kids started coming out of tents. Yeah. Oh yeah, that like, hurts. Yeah, and my kids were like, "Man, thank you, Dad. Thank you for taking care of us, and thank you for loving us because they've never experienced, you know, homeless kids or or anything like that. So to be able to bless them and and love on them, man, it was it was it was really impactful, bro. Because you're right, like people out there need help, man. They need a push. They need loving. They need Jesus. They and need, we can be that. And we're gonna be that. And so it's gonna Amen. be beautiful. So this is what we're gonna do on this date, y'all. That that we're going on Sunday uh, to the to the sunny side. So anybody that wants Saturday Saturday. 
Oh, yeah. Okay, so anybody that wants to partner with us on Saturday, you you are more than willing to come lock arms with Kingdom Music and and uh, the the swap service with the purpose. Uh, we're gonna get we're gonna have a flyer ready. But the day before, what we were thinking was doing an event. Yes. And this and it's gonna be any it's gonna be a free event. But we're we're asking you guys to bring a canned good, bring a blanket, bring something that we could take the next day to put in the grocery bag. This is not gonna be like going to the block to feed the less fortunate. We wanna we have a, a, an assignment to bring family bag, grocery bag. So whatever you could bring, if you want to put your own family bag together, bring a family bag. Bring bring three or four grocery bags. What yeah, you want to put? Yeah. And, you know you, whatever. You want to put, but we're gonna do a Houston event in H Town, man. Every time we come out there, man, we packed out there, we deep out there. Yeah. Imagine if all all six hundred to a thousand people popped up, and we all had bags, and we, then the next day we all made up in prayer, and we invaded this neighborhood with the love of Jesus. Not only just say I love you, but we came with goods, we yes. came with the plunder, we came to show an action that hey, we we're here. We might not be here every day, but we came in the name of Jesus to let you know somebody cares for you. There's help for you, and man, we just want to point you to King Jesus, Amen. And and we know people, we know people live all over the place, and um, you know, people always, you know, trust me, I get to see a lot of emails come through. Forgive us for all the ones we can't get back to, but we try. And I see people all the time say, "Hey, how can we partner with you guys, or how can we help you guys?" Um, you know, for those that can't physically be there or can't bring a grocery bag or a cam, the funds will help. Okay, so if you just go to www.kingdommusic.org, it literally says on there, KMF Houston Swap. Super simple. Right now. You can go to, to the website right now. Right and it now. shows you this assignment that yep. we're doing. And when you go to it, it'll say give. It, it'll go to a thing that says give. It'll drop down, and it'll be on there, and you can give whatever you want to give. I want to read the scripture, though. Um, Matthew 25, um, verse 35 through 37. And it's a familiar scripture, man, but um, we forget. It says, for, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. I think about that because, um, you know, when, when I was telling that story about the church giving us toys, Listen, I was a little kid, so a, a toy meant everything to me when I was a kid, right? But even in that, it piqued my interest to say, oh, the, the church cares enough about us to give us a toy? Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like walking up to somebody who's hungry and they're thirsty and you go, you know, I, I can't give you nothing to eat or drink, but I can give you Jesus. Like, yeah, that's powerful. And we get that as believers. But in that moment, that person is hungry and that person that's thirsty, if I can feed them and give yeah. them something to drink, now I want to tell you where this came from and the conversation about how God will provide and how you will, you know, how there's a thirst that'll be quenched from him that could, you'll never be thirsty again. And when I start talking about, but if I can, if I can at least extend my hand and say, listen, you know, this is a small thing, but God wants to do much greater than that. So that that's the bridge of the gap. We're we not trying to go out there and say, look what Kingdom Music did. Because we know that that don't mean no, nothing. No. We want to go out there and say, listen, we were the, the hand that God extended. I remember one time Rhino sent me $100 to my PayPal randomly for no reason. I didn't even need it. And I text him and I said, bro, what did you send me? <laughs> what did you send me this for? And he was like, man, God just put it on my heart to send it. And I was like, okay, like, all right, well, I mean, I guess it's something I could use it for. An hour later, maybe two hours later, somebody hit me up and said, listen, man, I'm a hundred dollars short on my bill and I really need help. I hate to reach out, but I don't really have. And I go, oh, it was never for me in the first place. It was for somebody else. But Rhino didn't know, but God used me as that middle vessel in order to give it to somebody else that he didn't even know or he didn't have a relationship with. So even in this, like when we're asking for, you know, those to be able to give or, uh, you know, money or non-perishables and stuff like that, because we might just be the bridge that can reach Sunnyside or go to go to this, this neighborhood. We just so happen to have the connection to go to this neighborhood and be a blessing. So, um, you know, we just the, the vessel that, that that God has decided to use and we just want to be effective for the kingdom, man. I, I don't know how many, I, I don't like just being like, Hey, we need money. We need, but in order for us to provide these things that these uh, people need, 
Um, it, that's what it takes. And so, do you, you care though? Yeah. Do, 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 do you care enough? Look, real love is not natural. It is supernatural. Absolutely. And the Bible says this, when a person becomes a Christian, the Holy Spirit begins to love in them. The first thing, the first fruit that the Holy Spirit puts in people is to love people, man. Yeah. And do you care about people? We don't have to do this. We, well, we, the ones that we're trying to stir to gather around is the believers, those who know how important it is. Uh, you guys see the fruit of the ministry. This is something that we're excited about. We want to bring Swap to your city as well. Yeah, we do. Uh, we have a big outreach coming uh, called Adopt the Block coming out in November, I yes. believe. We're going to speak on how we can all do it at the yeah. same time. It's going to be awesome. This month, right? Is this month, right? Or is it next month? This month at the it's end of April. 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 The beginning, the beginning April. of April. Yeah. We are about to invade Sunnyside in Houston as yes. a family. We're about to lock arms with Pastor Ernesto. And then the next day we're going into the prison as well. So Friday's the event. Like a food drive, but a family bag drive. Bring a grocery bag. Bring something. Uh, uh, and then the next day, we're going to hit Sunnyside, right? You're welcome to lock arms. Every uh, surrounding areas, if you're in Dallas, San Antonio, you're like, man, I'm coming out there. Let's invade that block out there with the love of Jesus. Then the next day, we're going to hit the prison. Uh, so it's going to be amazing and beautiful you guys if you want to if you want to lock arms right now we even got a cash app go to um oh you you can show them your cat here, here let me pull it's, it up, me pull uh, it up. it's so so for some people be like man i don't want to go to the website and do all that it's cool just go we, <laughs> we got we, we got an easy way look you it's it's k is 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 money sign k m f uh -huh. family so capital k then m f f a m i l y KMF family. You can cash app right there. Um and everything. Thirty dollars a bag. In, Whatever we, you put for bag. We, we actually made sure that the, the cash app was completely clear for anybody who gives that it will be able to go towards uh what we're gonna be doing in Houston. So you can go to kingdommusic.org, go to give and it'll show you Houston swap. Or if you just say I don't wanna do all that, I can do cash app you right now. Go ahead. The cash app is KMF family. Um, super simple. Um, and when it pops up, you will see it pops up. Um, Brian Trejo. This is actually really Brian Trejo's name on here. You know, I know I see, I see everybody, see these people making these scam pages. This is really the real deal, guys. So you can go, you can cash app or you can go to the website, yep. kingdomusic.org and give like that. Hey, listen, guys, look, um, I've always, and we have always encouraged this platform to help people. Uh, we man, and and this is all God's glory. We this platform has Amen. has paid rents. It has kept families from being thrown out in the streets. We've we paid bonds. We paid light bills. We yeah. Christmas gifts. Like yeah. we've always locked arms. Shout out to Stell. Shout out to Pastor Isaac and Floyd. There's so many of you guys out there. Shout out to Freddie. There's so many I can name that lock arm every every year with us just to be a blessing to other people. You guys, this is the opportunity for you guys to a partner with service with the purpose. The purpose is is to point to people not just to say Jesus, but to show them the heart of Jesus. Uh, compassion for people. These families, man. Like he said, this is a neighborhood where it's known for violence. It's known for drug dealing. It's known for depression. And, and maybe they, maybe there's some light in there. And we're coming to go and and, and lock arms with the more with more light to just sh show the the brightness, the the shine of Jesus Christ and and what it is to Amen. be in this kingdom, man. And I truly feel this. Like man, we could say church all day, but this is where it really matters. Absolutely. This is game. This is game time, man. This yeah. is where you be the Best. church. Yeah. Everything you learn in church, this is where you take it outside. For those who don't know, I'm more about being in the game hold up I'm, I'm gonna put him right back in there and so, and so and so let me let me um let me just say like how how this has been a blessing um i have a family member i won't say their name um but a little while ago they lost a hug their husband and um their i um their whole life was with them they've been with their husband for years and she went from you know um being you know uh 50 50 with her husband you know, to um, no husband, um, kids are out of the house, and um, it's just been tough for her for a long while, and um, she was having a hard time because the husband was the provider. She was having a hard time getting into a home, and it's been a long time, and so, you know, you go from family member to family member, you know, and then you know how that can go with sometimes with family, where family members are like, you know, but long story short, um, she finally got approved to, for somewhere to live. And through um, people who have given, we were able to help her, um, you know, pay her first month's uh, rent and deposit to get into her new home. You know what I mean? Like these little things matter. We had a brother who lost his vehicle, you know, through these avenues, um, we were able to help um, them get back on their feet. You know, we've been able to help people who were getting ready to get put out of the house. Um, we've been able to help people who, um, 
you know, um, you know, just just lost everything and had to start all over. Um, you know, it's just been um, time after time, and it's not because of oh, we're Kingdom Music. Kingdom, we are we are the ministry that we are because God decides to use us. But the people, everybody that comes together to help us, the body of Christ is the reason why we're able to do the things that we're doing. So yes. I don't take none of this stuff lightly. So when I'm, so when I'm asking, and listen, I understand everybody's asking for something. I get it. But when we go in here and we're asking, it's because we know the need. We already have a plan in place to execute, and we need uh, resources in order to um, provide the service that we're doing. So that's it. That's all. Um, you know, and, and listen, I want you to hear this and hear this clear for those that can give. Thank you for those that cannot give, but you a prayer warrior and you believe in the Lord and you lo love the Lord and God hears you. And he here, listen, we need those prayers because that's how God provides, man. He hears the prayers of his people and this is how things happen. So, you know, I, I would love to go in here and be like, hey, I just need 100 people to give $100. But that's not what, you know, that's not what God's telling me to do. He's just telling me to say, for those that want to help and can't help, and you can give what you can give, then amen. If it is 100 people that want to give $100, then so be it. If it's 1,000 people want to give it, I don't know. All I know is that I'm trying my best, and we're trying our best to maneuver whatever it is that God gives us. That's right. And be effective with that. So whatever comes in or doesn't come in, we're still going to be in Houston on April 13th. I 100% guarantee did. that. If we got to go and, and we got to pull from our own uh, to, to make it happen, we'll figure it out. So no matter what, we're going to do the assignment that God put us on. But if 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 people want to partner with us and help us along the way, A, man, we are 100% with that because it will lighten the load and it will make it much easier. And like Brian said, it does it does hurt when you see people and you got to turn them away. You know, last year we gave out 120 pairs of shoes. And for as many shoes as we gave out, we had to turn away a lot of people because we, we didn't have their size or we ran out or whatever the case might be. And seeing some of those kids walk away and um, not have, uh, man, it was like the, I felt like I let them down, you know. And, and, you know, we could only do what we can do, but I felt like I let them down, you know. And, um you know, I, when you want to pass that message on that God sees every every need, you know, sometimes when you can't, when you got to turn people away, it does hurt and um, it doesn't feel good to do that. And we don't want that. So I'm believing that there's going to be enough people on here, uh, enough people are going to hear this message, they're going to see what the heart is and what we're trying to do, um, that believe in what we're trying to do, that be, and want to partner with us. Um, and hey, some maybe some of you guys want to come out and serve. You know, maybe you're available to serve in the area. Come out, and um, you'll come see it. You know, this isn't a um, made up thing just to make something up. We'll really be out there physically, out there serving the community, and you can come see it hands on if you want to. We'll really be in those communities. I so. want y'all to come. I want y'all to get to. I want y'all to be out there for real. Amen. Amen. That that that's ideal. Ideally, we can get a bunch of people who want to come out there and get their hands dirty with us. Uh, um, and you know, and, and really hit the hit the streets with us, and, and and you know, and and be effective for the king. Um, so that's the goal. That's what we here um to talk about today. And and um, I think Brian got some stuff lined up that he wants to talk about as well, man. So we here for the whole. I'm gonna thing. put Ernesto back in. So we're gonna bring Ernesto back in, man. And um, I'm gonna quit talking so much so Ernesto can uh. Now wait till he t uh, uh, will come in. Uh, wait, so so Ernesto can can get his piece in because. We had so so two. Let me just say it since we already on here. Two of our main ministries, they're all important ministries, but these two ministries just so happen to cost more than every other ministry because you got to get you have to get uh, resource you have to get the resources you have to get um, you have to take care of travel and go to these different places and the two are service with a purpose and don't forget the forgotten don't forget the forgotten is the prison ministry so we've been invited and um, uh, prayerfully my sister shout out my sister Angie Rose we trying to set it up to where we get to go to Rikers Island Brian was Ooh. super excited about that so uh, um, we got the, the, these different prisons that we're um, trying to go into and we have to travel to all of these places and get to all these places and we have to have rooms for the couple of nights that we're there and you know we got to follow the rules of all the prisons so um these things always end up costing us uh money unless listen unless somebody um you got the plug on the um airlines and you and, and you could tell them hey listen uh, my brother's coming through. I need free uh, plane tickets for them. Can y'all hook them up? If so, we'll come. <laughs> we'll take that too. 
You know what I mean? So, you know, these two uh, ministries just so happen to cost the most. Don't forget to forget, which is our prison ministry. We go into the prisons. Service with a purpose always is going to cost us a certain amount because um, we, um, with service with a purpose, we always want to provide um, people with whatever it is that they need, that, that they need. You know, we do back to school. So we give school supplies, backpacks, shoes, stuff like that. Um, you know, we do um, service with a purpose in the um, holiday months, which people, most people consider November and December. Um, we want to feed people. We want to give, um, you want, you want to help with rent and stuff. Um, also in the November and December is the coldest months, right? Um, some of the coldest months and we want to be able to, uh, you know, help the homeless and give um, blankets and covers and beanies and hats and gloves and socks and shoes and um, warm clothing for um, the wintertime. So those uh, resources um, cost, you know, um, us going to Houston in April, um, wanting to give, uh, you know, groceries and um, hygiene and different things and um, laundry soap and stuff like that. The stuff that, that's needed um, that always came in handy for me when I was a kid, man. Straight up. Uh, you know, you know, being able to do that, you know, those things cost. So I know it sounds like, man, we just on here like, Hey, but what we just, we're, we're just trying to express to you, um, the mission at hand, what we're trying to do, um, what's, um, what's needed in order to, um, make this, uh, come into fruition. And, um, you know, so we just, uh, you know, we're trying to do our best. That's Ernesto texting right now. Tell them, tell them, uh, answer this thing on the, on the email. Okay. Um, hold on. Answer the email, answer the email. Uh, Ernesto. So, uh, so we're just talking about it, man. Um, you want to know what's funny? I'm about to just put Brian on blast. I have to, uh, what's funny is Brian hates these conversations. Uh, every time we talk about him and we go, Brian, man, we got this thing coming up that we got a fundraise for. He'd be like, he'd be like, all right, bro. And he tries to avoid us and puts it off as much as he can. Cause he doesn't even like asking. So if you see a post from Brian, he's already been, um, beat down over and over about asking. If you see him type something up, make his own post, he's, uh, he's already went over it and over in his head. Like, Oh man, I don't want to ask, but I'm telling him, I'm like, At bro, all. if we just got it, then we won't even ask, but we are gonna need the help of the community and different people who, to provide these services for people, bro. Cause we, we don't want, there's no fund that we have that in right now that we can do that. We have to raise the funds in order to do it. So but we will soon. Like, what, what, it's coming. Amen. It's Amen. coming. We've been praying. Uh, Amen. We're going to get some grants and, and it's going to be, we're, Amen. we're, we're get, praying for that. We get to do more things at a bigger, at, just to be a bigger blessing and at a mm -hmm. bigger, at, but you know, it's in God's time. And so we ain't tripping on that, man. Shout That's out to the prayers. So shout out to everybody who believes in the vision and the heart. Be, you know, uh, and you know, I just pray. I pray that we, we come to to bless them. That's all we want to do is bless this community, yep. bless this family. Yep. Why are we speaking about vision? Because some of y'all can catch it. Yep. Some of y'all, you may, maybe you want to duplicate it and do it in your neighborhood. Amen. You pick a neighborhood and start doing it. Because Amen. Amen. That's what it's about, man. Going out there, but uh, uh, Ernesto, man, uh, he was talking about getting us in Rikers Island, bro. Oh my God. Yeah, man. I got connections. you know, I got connections all over the world, man. You know, I do all can. <laughs> <laughs> nah, We're going actually, into the front door. actually. I'm I was, I was talking to my sister uh, Angie Rose, and we, and um, uh, it was late night. We was talking about some ministry stuff that we wanted to do uh, later in the month for some things with me and Arise. And um, I asked her where she was headed because she said she was tired, and she was like, "Well, I'm on my way to Rikers Island." And I was like, "Whoa, for real?" And she was like, "Yeah, we're gonna go over there." And I was like, "Man," I was like, "Brian, I know Brian would love to get into Rikers Island because when yes. I mentioned to him, he said." He said, from Rikers Island, man? Heck yeah. I said, <laughs> Rikers Island, yeah. Pelican Bay. I'm yeah. trying to get in all that. Yeah, so I mentioned it to her. And, uh, so that's something that we're going to try to make happen. So, yeah, we was talking about that a little bit ago. Uh, maybe you could talk a little bit. Uh, I mean, we're talking about, uh, you know, what we need for, um, um, you know, Houston uh, service with a purpose. And that's the main goal right now. We, we're focusing on that. But what time are we meeting up in, uh, for, uh, for Sunnyside? for Sunnyside? Yeah, what's from eleven to six. Eleven a.m. to six. There's a there's a flyer for it, y'all. In case you haven't seen it, yeah, there is a mm -hmm. flyer for it. We will be out there from eleven a.m. to six p.m. Is there any other co any other ministries that want to lock arms that you're out there right now? If you if you do, um, this is where you this is where I want you to contact contact Ernesto at um, where can they get get a hold of you on email or, the or number? Yeah, email. They can send me a message on Facebook. You know what I mean? Uh, or yeah, call, uh, Facebook and email is probably the easiest way to get in contact with me. Give them your email real quick, Ernesto, so they can have a, a email to. Reach My email out to is eperez two six eight four at gmail dot com. See, you know what? This is the problem with older people; they can't just make an email simple. They got to be like eperez. Hey, I got, I got, I got a simple four, one. Nine, three, <laughs> Ernesto, what, 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 um, what, what, what exact date are we going in? What, what weekend is this? 
Say that again. <laughs> April, April, what? <laughs> April, April to what? April 12, 13, and 14. The 12th is the, the event for the drive. The 13th is the event at Sunnyside, and then the 14th is a prison event. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be the 13th and 14th. Friday is going to be the food, the, the grocery bag drive. No, 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 no. Friday is going to be the... The 12th, Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, my bad. I, I jumped in. Yeah. Let the me shut up. Do you know the location we're going <laughs> to... Do you know the location we're going to do the event at, the food drive? Not yet. Not I'm yet. I should have that, but... Yeah. So, so that's to be determined. But you can email me at, at Ernesto dot get rap t uh <laughs> ernesto at get rap dot tv that's, it, that's easy <laughs> okay uh, wait ernesto <laughs> dot ernesto dot at get rap dot tv oh okay. ernesto at get wrapped dot yeah tv and, and this get is, wrapped is like rap like uh like rap christmas christmas gift and, w r a p e d yep. and this is for those other ministries out there to saying you know what kino music i'm gonna bring uh i'm gonna bring team challenge or i'm gonna bring uh victor outreach or i'm gonna bring whatever your, your ministry like you're saying look I'm, we're, we're gonna drive down to houston this is what we want to do we uh, we're gonna come we're gonna bring bags or maybe we're gonna send something you guys get the bags we're gonna come down there prayer warrior hands on we want we want to lock arms with those who are like minded, man. Yeah. Um, I'm Amen. Not, I'm gonna be honest, man. Um, I hear a lot of, a lot of Christian rappers rap about Jesus. Uh, this is the time where a lot of the, you ministers out there you come you come live what you rap, man. This is real true. Ain't no cap in the yeah. rap, right? So you come out there, pull up. Yeah, pull up. Who knows, man? Like, it ain't even about us. It's about the community. It ain't it's about the people. Hey, you it's can, about the need. You it's can, about being the body of Christ. Tag right? your fa tag your favorite Christian artist and let them know that they invited. They, they can come. They invited, hey, you man. name them. You name them. They can come. And, and this is the invitation. This everybody is the invitation. Can come, pull up. Yeah. Lot, come pray I, for somebody. Come hug somebody. Yep. Yeah. A lot, you know what I mean? Come love on somebody. A, a lot of you ministers out there, you send me messages. What about a feature? What about a tour? And you know what? I'd rather I'd rather be doing this. If you really want me to see your heartbeat, that you care about people and it's just more than music, this is where you come and you just you put your flash drive in your car, mm -hmm. leave leave your CD in your car mm -hmm. and come live your CD out, man. Come live your, your favorite song out. Come live your favorite prayer out in front of us, man. And I just want to be, I want to be surrounded by people that just want to bless people, man. So if this is you that, that, that's been looking for opportunity to lock arms with Kingdom Music. Um, maybe, maybe you've been in discipleship groups and yeah. you're like, man, I've been wanting to do more with you than just the groups. Where can I, well, hey, man, fly in Houston, man. Say, hey, I'm coming down, man. Here goes some money for some bags. I, I want to lock on, I want to do my part, yep. match with you guys. Or whatever it is, man, you can go to www.kingdommusic.org, man. This is an assignment. We're going into Sunnyside Service with a Purpose Swap. April 12th is the food drive. We're going to have an event. All we ask that you bring something to the event bring a, a yeah. bag, bring a family bag bring bring some uh, canned goods bring something that we could bless these houses with man and, and you know what I'm saying and then the next day we're gonna meet up from 11 to 6 at this neighborhood we already got the green light from the uh the property manager they're they're letting us go in there we're gonna have we're gonna have some bags ready for them the testimony uh some fellowship some music and we're just gonna uh invade that neighborhood man with the love of jesus and so man we want to see you guys there be a part of what's going on wish i could show them what is it i want to show them how to how simple it is to give, man. Listen, okay, you could probably you could probably see it a little bit. Look, you just gonna you go can to, see it. You have kingdommusic.org and yeah. you're just gonna push give right there, okay? It should pop up. It's gonna pop up right here. Boom. And then it says right here, give one time. You're just gonna hit give one time, and then you're gonna drop down. And when you drop down, it says it on there. Houston swap April 13th. You click on that. Once you click on there. Let me make sure my car stuff don't, because I'll be giving to the ministry too. I'll make sure my car ain't, <laughs> make sure my card ain't popping up. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Here at the top, you enter your amount that you want to give, you know, and then you go forward, bro. It's super simple. Once it go forward, okay, I can't show because my car pop up. But Shut once out. you go forward, <laughs> there you go, man. It's super simple, like that, and you can give whatever amount you want to give to the ministry. Min, it's that min, simple. Mini Mari, uh, Mini Mari just sent a hundred dollars. That's you man, know how look you, at that. you just buy two family bags and then so, and you put a, a ten dollars on another bag. Thank, Fire. Thank you, sis. Hundred dollars, man. It's, thank it's, you, it's, sis. It's a. Hey, it, it's that. It's that simple, like. Man, our, our money wasn't given to us to see how many things we can accumulate. Man, go bless somebody, man. Straight up, just go be a blessing to somebody, man. Just, Super. Hey, listen. What's what, man? I had Brian. Listen, I love Brian. I've known Brian for a long time, and we have taught each other a lot of different things. We've learned different things from each other. But one of the things that Brian really taught me was how to give. Now you got to understand. I come from a place where we don't have a lot, so giving is hard to. It was always hard to give. Cause I, I always felt like I would never get it back, uh, or if, if I gave, I, I, you know, even my dad. I love my dad, but my dad's a hoarder, 
right? He keeps everything. <laughs> and I never understood why until I started getting, until I got, until I realized like, oh, because well, we don't have a lot. So what we, so we keep everything that we can and we keep it and we scared to give it away because man, th this is my stuff. This is what, this is what I got. And then when I started, I started to learn, like I would see Brian give, give, give. And I would be like, sometimes he would give stuff. Listen, I'm not, he ain't asked me to say this. So if he get mad at me, he get mad at me. And I ain't, I'm not trying to put his business, but I've seen him go different places and people try to bless him. And he goes, you know what? This isn't, God didn't tell me to take this and give it to him. Or he'll even take it and say, you know what? I know exactly what to do with this and yeah. give it to a family in need. So I've seen him give so much that it helped me. I'll never forget. We were at an event one time and the most I had ever given up to this point was maybe like $40. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause I'm, you know, and then I come from the old church that, you know, uh, you know, you give a dollar, you just, you know, Hey, let me get a dollar, but you give a dollar. right? <laughs> it's just the truth. Yeah. And I remember I had never given this much and I'm sitting there and I didn't have much. I didn't. And God said, give a hundred dollars. Now that might sound like nothing to nobody. Now it's a hundred dollars. At that time, that was so hard for me to give that I'm not going to lie to you. Like it made my heart beat fast. Yeah. I thought about what I had to pay when I got home. I thought about everything that I had to do, but I was never more. It was never more clear that God was telling me to give that. And Amen. I took that hundred and I gave it. And I know y'all want to be like, y'all want to hear the rest of the story that I just rejoiced, like gave a hundred dollars, but it hurt me. I sat there and I was like, man, God, I don't want to give with the wrong heart, Lord. Like I, I know you said do it, but this, this is hard for me. I never did that. And God yeah. just said, Hey, just rejoice. You, you were obedient. Just rejoice. Yeah. Now I can go on with the rest of the story and say what God did after that. Let's just, let me just say that God showed me that it was him in my giving. Yep. And ever since then, I have not had a problem with giving ever since because God showed me the principle of giving in that time. And this was yeah. not me giving in my abundance. Okay. Now I'm not telling I'm not saying this was this you have to do this, but this was not me giving in my abundance. This was me giving in my lack where I didn't really have much. Wow. And but I was obedient to him because I trusted God and I realized that that hundred dollars, it wasn't even never really mine anyways. It was always God's. Yeah. And so Come I on. gave even in my lack. And God has continued to show me over and over and over how he and it ain't always he always provides money, but but how he provides period, just in us being obedient to it's him. It's worship, man. I, I feel like it ain't a sacrifice unless it hurts you. Oh, it hurt, you too. know. It, mm -hmm. And they don't have to be the biggest thing. It's something like you you, you grow in it. You know what I'm saying? I remember my first my first 20, my first 100, my Me first 1,000, my first 10,000, so went in. crazy. And uh, it, it it took faith, every single one. You know, 100, I was like, okay, this be the, in my head, I'm like, you're happy, right? It's 100. And God said, <laughs> but you, and I remember God saying, now I need you to do 1,000. God this didn't, he tested you. You know, it's a test. Like, do you trust me? Yeah. You, do you think I could? You don't think you ever get this back, or you you don't you think it belongs to you or, for, or to me? Because mm -hmm. yeah. God's so real, He'd be like, keep it. You think it's yours? Keep it. Oh, that's so real. But you'll never you'll never you'll never get the freedom in worshiping, and you'll never see my abundance. And you know, so being a blessing, buying, spending a hundred, that maybe a sacrifice. I'm a, you know I'm gonna sacrifice a hundred. Yeah. I might need it, but I'm gonna go ahead and buy two bags for the family for these families, man. Maybe. Maybe that's how God's telling you, like, I, I want you to go feed the family. So you might not be able to be at this at this, at this, this place we're going to, but you could be at this place. Amen. You, your heart can Amen. be in the there. The resources. Yeah, the resources could be in there. And do, don't, and do you trust the people that are going? Like, do you believe in in, in us? And you know what? Right. I, I believe you're going to do the right thing with these bags. And I, you're not just going to throw it at them. Like, look at me. You're going to give them in love. And I believe I believe that God's going to honor these, this, mission, this mission. So, man, uh, Ernesto, I thank you, brother, for one for love, loving your city and loving Jesus yeah. and loving the people in front of you, bro. Because it, all these years from locking arms with you, man, uh, going in and out the prisons, man, you don't have to do that as much time as, that you sacrifice for the people. And, and now you're doing it even in the projects in the neighborhoods. And I, I love that. I love the trenches, man. That, that's where we come from. <sighs> and so to go back there and show them like, hey, man, you ain't alone. There's hope. Like to Amen. me, to me, to me, it means the most. Cause he said, I ain't go to the, I ain't trying to go to the people that are healed. I let's go to the sick. And I ain't saying everybody yeah. in that community is sick. I'm just saying that's an area where sickness is spread. And I'm talking about sin, where sickness is promoted. 
And we just want to go in there and let them know the solution is not kingdom music, is not Brian, it's not Antoine. The solution is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the one that we glorify. Right. He, he's he's the one we're going to represent. That's the kingdom of heaven. So every bag you buy is not for kingdom music. It's for Jesus. It's for his kingdom. It's for Amen. his righteousness. And if you belong to him and you love him, then honor him yeah. and just lock arms with us. We're asking for the body of Christ to lock arms on this mission. Next week, next month will be another mission. But this week, let, let's go. Let's go. Hit, <laughs> let's go. PowerPoint yeah. this devil, man. Let's go. Yeah. Invade this place with love and care package, man. Straight up. And 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 uh don't let's never let's never get it twisted. Nobody's looking down on a community. These are the same communities that we come from. That's right. Yeah. These, facts. Are, these are the same communities that my people still live in. How does it feel? Like after this one, we're doing a Fort Wayne again, right? Yeah, after this and we And this go, is your city. Yeah, after this, we go back to my to my hometown where and, I first met Brian. And what are we doing now? What like every year, what we've been doing? So what we've been doing, so so the the first year we gave out um Backpacks and school supplies. Yep. Um, last year we gave out um, shoes. Man, how many shoes? We gave out 120 pairs. How does that feel to go back to the same city that we come from, nothing from, right? And and go back there and be like, you know, because some people say, uh, man, like just just to go back there and feed the man. kids, like give the kids, whole, like even the message, the music, the, the ministry. We come there with the whole squad. Like we're man, this is the place my brother got murdered, so it's hard for me to go. But to go back there with the light and the love of Christ and yeah. the like arms, man, I know it feels good for y'all, man. We we, we I, I, it was so awesome to see some of the people that I ran the streets with, some of the people I, yep. I, I, I sold drugs with, some of the people I did. A lot of other crimes with that I don't want to discuss on here, but you know, you know, a lot of different things. Seeing old, um, you know, just um, just people that I grew up with in the community was so it was so awesome being able to go back and and be and do like the church did for me and provided us with clothes and and toys and stuff like that. Like we were able to feed everybody that came when I, not one person went without. But if they didn't eat, it's because they chose not to. But we made sure we had enough for everybody to eat. We had bounce houses for the kids to just have fun. We had a place, a safe place where they could actually hear rap music in a safe place place that was rapping about Jesus and giving life and light where the parents didn't have to worry. We had everybody out there all on the same page. We, we don't just have artists that do music, but we have, we have these different men and women of God that minister to people, spend time with them, hug on them, love on them, talk to them. So it was amazing to go back. I had to hold back tears multiple times because it was beautiful to see what I was, the, the place that I did all my all the dirt at and all the wrong at to be able to go back to that place and be a blessing to them. We didn't we don't charge for them to come. None of that. That's one of our. You got to understand we're we're looking mm -hmm. to never charge to do any of these things. So we don't we don't charge them. We don't take nothing from them. They don't got to pay for nothing. Everything we have we're giving back to them freely. Every pair of shoes was free. Every backpack was free all the food was free the snow cones was free the bounce houses was free but everything that we did you know and it was just a it was a blessing we it got blessed me to see it man we got people asking where do where do we lock arms okay so go to www.kingdommusic.org yeah and, and you'll see it on there if you when you go to give you when you go when you go to click where right there's one that says Maine, but there's one that says uh uh houston um, um, swap 2024, I believe. Right. It's very specific. Swap. You will see Houston on there. Swap Houston. Yep. Swap means service with the purpose. That's yes. one of our nonprofit departments. Yes. It's a, a it, we go out there and be the hands and the feet of Jesus. So this is the assignment. This at April 13th is April 12th is going to be the food drive free event in Houston, Texas. Bring a family bag. It's thirty dollars a bag. We're saying thirty to forty dollars. We just guessing. We want family bags, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. We want to bring every household a family bag. So we're we're saying, man, buy two bags, but ninety dollars. I want to buy two bags. I ain't, I don't grocery shop. I'm gonna be honest with you. My wife do, so I really don't know how much a grocery bag takes. Thank you, Abby. And, yeah. Brian, and let me tell you something right now. Brian don't know how to grocery shop either. He just throw random junk food inside <laughs> the grocery <laughs> cart and keep it moving. So we don't really know how much it costs. So however much you you think a bag of groceries would cost, then then supply. We just said thirty because we figured it. We were just giving around about. We might be shopping old time days. I don't know thirty dollars. I don't know if that's that'll do it or not, but. Nonetheless, you know, whatever shout, you can give would be good. Shout out to Abby, man. Thank you, Sister Abby. Abby Sister Abby's putting all the information. Shout out to Sean. I see my brother Sean. Amen. He does, uh, don't forget the Forgotten Crusades with us as well. Amen, amen. That, that's my dude, man. Uh, Sacramento uh, good, KMF. Good, good. The Bible says, you shall eat the fruit of your labor of your hands. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You person. shall be blessed and it shall be well with you. The good news, God rewards those who work hard and that can come in, in that can come in a ver variety of ways, y'all. Uh, but if you continue to put solid work ethic, you continue to have diligence hands and the work that you do for the kingdom there 
there is a reward there, not just for you, but for your kids. So you, uh, you, you leading by example, teaching other people, stirring the good works of people. Uh, that's what we're all we're doing, man. We're trying to stir the good works that every single one of you ministers, ministries, believers, sons and daughters of Jesus Christ will be like, you know what, man, I, I want to do this in my neighborhood. I want to do this in my community. I want to go out there and feed. I want to go out there and help. Uh, I have more than enough to share. There's some people out there. You're just better off. You're just a little more well off than other people. And there's nothing wrong with that. I believe God does have different honors for people on earth where some people are there. They could be trusted with increase. They could be, you know, I ain't saying everyone can't, but God knows what, why he gives each of us what he gives us. And if that's you Amen. and you want to have favor and say, you know what, brother Brian, man, you guys go invade that block. Here goes 5,000. Oh, here goes, man, go buy all the bags you need. We just want to bless you guys. Maybe you have a business. Maybe, maybe you could do that. Maybe you could lock arms and saying we want to sponsor nothing but socks or we want to sponsor whatever it is that you want to do. This is to go into a community to be a blessing, man. And uh, let's do that, man. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I, I pray for favor. That's all we ask God Amen. to uh, align us with the right people, with the right heartbeat that knows this to bring him glory right now. Go to www.kingdommusic.org and partner with us. Sister Abby put info if you want to send to a cash app or to a Zelle or something, she there's info on, on the comments right now as we speak, man. It's, it's 338. It was 420, but uh, some of them, uh, I guess, had to go. Shout out to Sean. I love you, bro. He said shout out to Ernesto. Shout out to Sean. Love you, bro. I love you guys, man. It's just more than making music and, ra and rapping about it. We actually have uh, departments and we have KMF Women Conference just came. It was successful. Yep. Shout out to the KMF Women Discipleship Group. They awesome. had a beautiful conference this week in, in, uh, in uh, uh, Fort Worth. Shout out to Victory Church, Anna, Josiah, Pastor Spider, Spider yeah. and the whole KMF team, all the leaders, all the armor bearers. Man, Ernesto, you'd be so proud of them. I know you've seen the videos. They did amazing. Mm -hmm. And the next one, we are, our next conference coming up this, oh, next, this year is going to be the men and the women's. It's already in the planning. Man. It's going to be beautiful, y'all. You guys are not going to want to mm. miss the men yep. and the women's conference. Men man. and women conference together. Men, women, and children. children. That's, why children. We need, that's why we need prayer because we said men, women, and children, right? So we got to, <laughs> we got to, hey, listen, listen, you got to have a special anointing and calling on yourself yeah. to take care of children and have the patience to deal with the children. Not that children are a, a, a burden, but if you don't know how to handle it, and you, 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 you know, you in for, you know, you in for a long day. So, yep. amen. The Bible uh, commands us to love God and also to love others as love brings us and others to God and it produces a desire within us to obey and to please him. It honors God when we think of other people. It honors God when we put other people and look after other people's interests before our own. That's biblical, y'all. Some people are like, man, I got to, God knows I got to take care of mine first. But the, the truth is my, my biggest breakthroughs have been um, when I go help other people and the things I need help with. Mm -hmm. God helps me, man. When he says that, right? Esteem others above yourself. Yep. Yes. When it comes to yeah. healing, when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to finance, uh, it's something about you putting yourself last. And, and it's crazy because in this world, we're taught the opposite, right? You come first. Nobody's, first, nobody's going to love you like you, but that's what the enemy wants you to think. <laughs> The truth is, man, uh, God loves you, and he shows you how to love others. And he says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. so, and the way yeah. you did to the least of these, you have done unto me. So visiting people in prison, going out there to these neighborhoods, it is showing the heart beating in the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ. And he is coming back for a bride that is without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. He's coming out for coming back for his bride that is working, coming back for not for a bride that is asleep and is dead. Amen. His bride is alive. It's yes. a remnant. It will not compromise. It's going to show people what self-control is, what discipline is, what discipleship looks like, what maturity looks like, what forgiveness looks like, what generosity looks like, what gentleness looks like, what hope looks like. Man, people that need hope. Some people don't have hope. They got to see an individual that says there is hope for you. How do you, what do you mean? Where is this hope? The hope of glory. His name is Jesus. There is hope in Jesus. There's the good news that we come to preach, man. Not to complicate nobody. So when we come to these neighborhoods, to these gangbangers, to these strippers, to these addicts, and these people are saying, man, I ain't looking for some college book or something difficult to understand. Mm -hmm. I, I'm high. I'm drunk right now. My heart's broken. What do you have for me? Guess what? There's somebody who died for you. There's somebody who loves you. Somebody who can forgive you. 
Mm. Somebody who can heal you. Somebody who is enough to get you off those drugs. What? I done tried every program. I done did. You're telling me that. What? Who is this hope of glory? Who is this Jesus? And you know what? Showing the love of him. Letting them know that, hey, man, he's there for you. You know, saying a prayer with an, an anointing, right? You go in and saying a prayer. Father God, Holy Spirit, touch his heart and his mind. Hit him like you've done me, Lord. You have a way of, of manifesting in people's life and showing them how real you are, how real your love is. Do that right now in the name of Jesus. I believe that's what God is going to do, Amen. man, from the 13th to the 14th, even into the prisons, man. Amen. So lock arms with us, guys. Nestor, you got anything to say? No, nah, man, I just appreciate everybody. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for, for partnering up with, with H-Town and just thank you for the ministry Amen. and and your love for people, man. You've been uh, talking for, about this for, for a while. Amen. I'm happy we yeah. able to finally make it happen. Hey, I, can, I, can I challenge you and Brian real fast? Because I, I got a question. Um, I don't know if this is off topic or, or not, but it was just popped into my heart and hopefully it can help somebody. Um, you know, I know you said that um, the Bible says to what to love others as and you love yourself. Yep. What, 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 what would you guys tell somebody who, um, on who struggles with loving themselves? I'm just putting someone just who has a out. problem with loving themselves. Somebody who has a problem with saying, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how to forgive myself. I don't know how to love myself. I don't feel like I've added value to people. I don't feel like I, and so they so hard on themselves. They don't even, for me to love somebody else the way I love myself, but I haven't loved myself the way that somebody else would consider um, a good you know, a, a, a good way. What, what, what would you, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just I, curious. I'll say mine first and then Ernesto, look, okay. this is, this is what I got. I would, t- <laughs> I would tell, I would tell somebody first that you're valuable, Amen. that you, you are worth loving and it shows like if let's say, and this is, there's somebody that would love you, but let's say no one in this world wanted to love you. Right. And that's how you felt. I would say that the one who loves you is enough. Amen. If it's only if if you only gotta have hold on to God's love, then that His love is enough. The Bible says neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Death can't and life can't. Angels won't and all the powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away from you. Mm. And you're valuable. You're worth loving. And when, I think whenever your confidence and your self esteem will grow and be healed when you realize that, hey man, the one who created the universe yeah. loves me. So, yeah. even if, so even if no one else does and no one does, there you go. the one who loves me is enough. That's, That's what I would say. Amen. Ernesto? Man, he stole my answer, ah, bro. That's why he said, that's why he said, I heard your sermon. You know, I, I, would, I would say along the same lines, man, like the king of the universe. You know what I mean? Your creator, the one who knows you intricately, the one who knows every hair on your head, the one who knows how uh, before you were born, like he loves you tremendously yeah. and he sees you a, he sees you valuable and he redeems yes, you yes. like so much that he died on the cross for you. Right. Man. When he didn't even have to, when we hated him, when we came against him, he went to the cross for us and he loves you tremendously. Yeah. And then I think for me, it would, it would, it would, it would go along the lines of building a relationship because sometimes people, we can tell people that and they don't know what that means. You yeah. know, they have a, a tainted, a tainted uh, definition of love. So yeah. being the love, being the love that I'm expressing to them, being the love that I'm sending them about Jesus, yes. like loving them unconditionally that means that if they hurt me if they backstab me if they i still show them love because that's the love that god has for us yeah, yeah. you know and sometimes people we, we love people in conditions and we show them the, 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 the love of the world so we tell them we're going to love them and forgive them and then when something happens we shut them away right. and we love them like everybody else does so that's not no yeah. different than what the next person did yeah, yeah. you know the bible says that I, we want you uh not to just love those who love you but love the ones who come against you you know what I mean? And, and showing that type of love is, is transformational. It's yeah. the goodness of, of God that brings a heart to repentance. That's right. The so be, being, being the example of that, being the love of Jesus and, and walking with somebody intentionally and relationally, it, it has it has a, a, a bigger impact than, than just sending a man, you're loved. Man, That's you're loved. Hey, you, you know, know? Um, you, I think you, I think it, it was good as um, um, we, we really don't know what love is. We're taught a superficial love from like movies and, Facts. you know, you know t- conversations. So learning what love is, um, will, will, I think will actually teach you how to love yourself. Uh, also, Nesto, um, you got a great, I wish, I wish people would know your testimony, man. <laughs> you got some brothers that love you to the fullest, bro. Like I've, I've been, I mean, I've seen things like in, in my brother's life 
Like shout out to George. I see George on here, man. What's up, George, man? Yeah. Shout out to George. I seen, <laughs> I seen, I seen George put a, a hoodie on in the middle of the night and go and go to some places just to go look for look for a <laughs> love, being the love that Ernesto talking about. Being that yep. love, man. Yep. And so we're we're blessed to have brothers that not just say I'm your brother, yep. but our brothers, man. Amen, amen. Like the yep. love shows, right, bro? Like I'm I'm surrounded by some real like minded. I ain't That's... saying we're perfect, no. but we got a perfect guy that keeps us together. Amen. And from man, I, I got some beautiful Houston. Them brothers, man, that out there, they really love the kingdom, man, and love and love like Jesus love, man, and they have real fights, real battles, and like, and I know they're in the in in, in the field because you can look at their armor and be like, yeah. you dent it up, ain't you? Yep. <laughs> you out here for real? <laughs> like, you really you out here? Up. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, when I I first learned I learned how to love myself was when uh when my when my daughter was born, right? Ooh. Um, I, I was watching a, um a podcast just recently. I don't know if you know who Ryan Clark is, but he was talking about um about his first when his when his child was born that when his child was born the doctor that was supposed to deliver his child was off doing something like eating had lunch yeah. like while my kid is getting ready to be born right and so they had a nurse in there who didn't know what they was doing was panicking the baby's coming out this and this and that the baby came out i want to say he said the um umbilical cord was like stuck or I, i'm not sure i can't remember the details but he said the doctor came in and he said something to the doctor and the doctor said something crazy to him. And he said, that was the first time he said, I never met this baby before. Uh, this was the first time I ever seen this baby. Wow. He said, I was ready to do something to that doctor. He said, <laughs> listen, he said, this was the first time and I never met this baby that I knew that I would kill for that baby. He said, and that I would die for that baby and that there was not that I would do any and everything for that baby. And it was his first time ever meeting that baby right yeah and so it made me That's think fire, it made me think about the first time my child was born and how much i loved her and didn't know anything about her this is when i learned what love was because it made me think about how god looks at me yes and so how how my so it's so important for me to for my kids to love themselves the way that I love them, for them to understand, like, you are precious, you are beautiful, there is so much, I love you so much, it made me realize that how I treat me is a reflection of, of God, right, how yeah. I love me is saying, is like, how could I not love me when God loves me, right, it's just, it, it's just this, this, um, um, reciprocated love that you learn that's un Amen. you can understand God's unconditional love for you, right? And it made you go, man, how could I love myself any less knowing that the creator of everything loves me like this? Like I yeah. am loved like this. So it kind of taught me when when my kids was born what's e what not just love for them. Yeah. I mean what love was, but self-love as well. How much you want them to love themselves because of how you look at them, right? So kind of hard to explain, man, but it was just my understanding. And imagine right? how the dad feels feels mm -hmm. if the doctor or any enemy would try to take the identity to say your your dad doesn't love you mm, that yeah. dad doesn't care and the and god's like that's hold, hold up man that's my son's identity yeah. that's his inheritance yes. that's who is created to know he's loved mm -hmm. know who he belongs to and you allowed sin you allowed the drugs you allowed this enemy to come and say you don't belong to nobody mm. nobody cares about you man and god is saying i love you, you so it. much yeah. not only that i created you but i sent something i love i sent my only begotten man. son that i care of the same way you care about your kid yes i sent my son yes. to lay down his life for your wickedness for your sin so we can never be separated because i want you to know i want fellowship with you i desire to be with you for eternity Come on. don't ever let the enemy tell you. i don't know who this is out there Man. do not ever let the enemy tell you that god god doesn't care about you that, that god's not listening to your prayer that god doesn't want to hear who you what what's going on in your life god wants to sit down with you let's make amends there's some things that separate us hey but i have the solution do you believe in do you believe in the death, burial, and the resurrection of my son, Jesus Christ? Because this sacrifice that I sent for you, when you believe in that, guess what? This day, we're the free salvation, the free gift of salvation. You don't have to pay for what I have for you. This is something I give freely Amen. because I we're love you. It. Man, Come on. man, so think about it. He created us, made something beautiful. We messed that up, and he says, I'm gonna give you something else beautiful. Yeah. And, and, and and it's and it's the heartbeat. And here, here it goes for you. And so many people get you know what they do with that be beautiful free gift? I don't want it. Mm, I'd, rather, yeah, I'd, rather, I'd rather have my pills. I'm, co I'm cool with my drink. I'm cool with my pleasure. Man. I'm cool with this kingdom I'm building. I don't want it. And for those who reject this free gift, for those who reject the gospel of Jesus, 
you're going to regret it on judgment day. Mm. Whether you want to believe heaven or hell is real, whether you want to, I don't believe in all that. I get it, man. You're entitled to believe what you want to believe. But my friend, brother, sister, you are going to regret it for choosing your own pleasure over what God has for you. You're going to regret choosing your compromise. You're going to have to answer to that one day. And there's a place called And you hell. still will bow. And, you're, and you're still going to bow. Still gonna, and you're still going to confess. Yep. Yeah. That he's King Jesus. Yeah. He's, he's you know king. I mean? Whether you want to believe it or not, he's King of King. He's sovereign. He's in control. I'm sorry if you prayed for somebody or something that happened and never went the way you wanted and that made you mad at okay. God. I'm sorry that, that somebody misrepresented who God is. I'm sorry if some religion made it complicated and you felt like he was a, a stepdaddy with rules that just, no, no, no. He loves you. And when you love him, you'll find out what pleases him and you'll honor him because you want to do it. Man. Not because he has to force you to do it. It's because you know his goodness. You know he cares. And I, I pray right now for those. Those who are out there right now, we're going to go into man. prayer. And man, um, this this is the time where each of y'all, man, just begin to examine your hearts. Mm -hmm. Examine your hearts out there, man. If there's anything you've been doing that's dishonoring dad, just begin to confess, repent right now. Just be honest with God. If you're faithful to confess, he's faithful to forgive. And this is the time Amen. right now where God begins. I'm going to let Antoine and, and Pastor Ernesto begin to pray. And we're going to go into prayer right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So... As we pray, I, I want to say this too. How how crazy is it for us to um, not receive this love that God freely gives in exchange for a bunch of things that don't matter on the day when we leave here? Like how foolish is it for us to not accept a free love, not a love that costs, not a love that... Uh, um, that we have to go buy or we have to go find a free love that's given to us freely that is unconditional not a conditional love like man gives us you know I love you based on the condition of how you treat me God says you treated me bad most of your life and was disobedient most of your life but I still love you so much I extend my free love to you how foolish of us to reject a free love in exchange for a bunch of things that profit us nothing when we leave here. That's right. When my grandmother passed away, my family fought over her things. And I know that my grandmother would have much rather us just come together and love each other than to fight over the stuff that she had. Right? And so God's saying, I'm, I offer you my free love. You don't have to pay for it. It's going to take a little bit of sacrifice and some obedience and it's going to be some uncomfortable times and it's going to be some uncomfortable things, but I freely give it to you. And all that stuff that you're chasing and all the things that the world's telling you is important, uh, you can't even leave here with it. The things that people are going to fight over when you leave, they won't matter to anything. You want to know it's crazy? And I'm going to pray. Uh, but we want to know it's crazy. All those things that we fought over, that were my grandmother's, only a few things matter. I mean, only a few things are still here. Of yeah. all that stuff. The car's gone, the TV, the D, all these different things. All that stuff isn't even here. A lot of it's junk, trash, gone. And we fought over things that don't even exist anymore. They're gone. And um, I know she would have much rather us um, just remember her and honored her and loved her. So God has free love to give to you, um, you know, and it's going to take some sacrifice and some obedience. But it's far greater than um, chasing after a whole bunch of things that's not going to matter when we leave here. Um, but let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Um, first, I want to say thank you, God. Because I feel like a lot of times we come to you in prayer with a laundry list of things that we want to be done, but we just want to acknowledge you and just yes, say thank Lord. you. God, thank you. I can think back on so many different times in my life where things were going wrong or, or I didn't think that things would get any better or I felt like today would be my last day and I couldn't Jesus. make it through this and this felt like the worst thing that ever happened to me and there was nothing that I could would bring me out of it and I had hurt people's feelings around me and I had hurt people so bad that I didn't want to be here anymore or I did I remember those days God but even in those things God in those days that seemed like the worst ever you kept me and you still got me here right now thank you for the breath this morning in my yes, body Lord. when somebody else didn't wake up thank you for the wife and the children that you gave me you blessed me with when I didn't deserve them thank you yes for all the ways God even if it's some people out here say, well, I don't have family. I don't have a wife. I don't have children. I have breath in my body mm. that the creator of the universe told, called me by name and told me to get up this morning. God, thank you. I just want to say thank you, God. Yes, Lord. 
I don't want to ask for a whole bunch of things, God. I want to acknowledge you and just say, thank you first and foremost, God. And God, you know all the needs that we need and all these things that we're trying to do, Lord God. Your will be done. You'll provide. And so we love you, Lord. And I pray for everybody that's on here right now, Lord God, that might just be struggling just in everyday life because life throws different things at us day by day, Lord God. I pray that you will show up. Yes, Lord. That you will just show up and show your face, God. Maybe their whole situation doesn't change in a moment. But God, if your presence is there, God, we know things are already changing. God, I pray for Amen. you. I pray for your presence. Yes, Lord. God, if we can just be in your presence, in your presence, there's healing. In your presence, marriages are restored. In your presence, relationships you, are Father. stored. In your presence, healing takes place in yes, our minds. In your presence, physical healing takes place in our bodies. In your presence, Lord God, people are freed from prison. In your presence, Lord God, love is shown to people. In your presence, financial situations are taken care of. In your presence, Lord God, um, um, our, our, our children uh, are, are, are raised right. In your presence, Lord God, we're better fathers. In your presence, we're better mothers. In your Thank presence, you. we're better people, Lord God. In your presence every single thing changes yes, Lord. and Amen. so we thank you lord god i pray above all your presence to be evident and we love you god in jesus name mm-hmm. thank you lord. In jesus name amen father we uh we thank you lord because uh you're so good and you're so wonderful lord uh yes, thank god. you for the blood that you shed for us on the cross lord and we thank you for your forgiveness of our sins we thank you for just who you are and what you've done for us lord and i just pray right now um anybody out there struggling with with worth father god with uh with value with their identity anybody questioning who they are or or allowing the enemy to speak into their heart or into their mind that that they don't belong to you or that they're not of value that that they are not who they say you are lord i i come against that right now in the mighty name of jesus yes we know that it's the faith in your blood it's the faith in the cross it's the faith in the finished works of jesus that causes receive that causes uh delivered that causes redeemed lord we just thank you for those works father god and we ask that uh, you continue to empower these people and and just bless them lord i pray for a uh, uh, freedom and deliverance in their lives i ask that you continue to fulfill them fill them with your love lord and i know sometimes in life we struggle to to be loved and that's the reason why we struggle to love others lord so I pray that people just begin to receive a fullness of your love so that love can overflow into others, Father God. I thank you for my brothers and this ministry. I thank you for Houston Lord, everything that's about to take place. Yes, Lord. We pray that you just show up and show out in a yes, mighty God. way in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Um, I, was, I, was, I was speaking earlier, uh, someone out there right now, um, maybe, maybe um, you don't know the character of, of your heavenly father. Maybe you think, man, I'm in trouble. I got a list of sins, brother Brian. You know, I know I'm in trouble with dad. Like, I don't even know him as dad. I just know he's a God and he punishes the wicked and I live a wicked life. I've been there, man. You're you're, you're looking at a man who had blood on his hands. Uh, I've been involved in everything from perversion to corruption to uh, robberies to every wicked thing you could think about. I've been in, in, in a table full of wickedness where they where they plotted on each other, man. And um, I, I, I looked at God's love like, man, I'm... I'm so far from his love. I'm so far from his forgiveness. Uh, even if I say I'm sorry, I'm going to have to work for him to even consider me to be one of his. But that's not it. Um, in Psalms 103, 8 through 14, y'all, it's a verse that, which tells about God's character and that there's always forgiveness to be found in him. It says, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide. Nor will, he, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according Man. to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgression from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. This is a father that understands that man, that our days are on are, are so small compared to his eternity. This is a father who knows that we won't get it right. Matter of fact, he knows that some of you are going to keep making the same mistake. Today's the day that you cry out and say, Father God, I need to know more of you. May I feel 
I was lied to by the enemy. He made me feel like like there was door after door after door after door, and I couldn't get to you. But there's only one door that needs to be open, man of God, woman of God, and it's the door that comes through Jesus Christ. This is the gate. This is the narrow path that leads to life. This is the only way you're gonna get to the Father. It is through the Son. He sent His only Son to die for your wickedness, to die for my wickedness, and He laid down His life. They didn't take it. He laid it down because He loved us so much. And so to His obedience to the Father proved that we can overcome sin because he overcame sin his obedience to, to the father's will proved that we can overcome these things in life if he defeated death if he defeated sin if he defeated satan and we live in him die in him and live in him that the same authority that he has he gives to his children we are in his righteousness so right now believe right now in the name of jesus believe in what he did at the cross and guess what and begin to repent how do you repent you turn you have a change of mind mm -hmm. will you still struggle with certain things you probably will some get it overnight some don't it's a process of sanctification Amen. but guess what you you begin to have a change of thought saying you know what i don't want to stay in these drugs like that you know what i don't want to stay a liar i don't want to be a murderer i don't want to be racist i don't want this way of living that dishonors god my way of thinking of sin has changed my mm. way of indulging it I, i'm not enjoying it no more god my way of the way i look at you is changing you're a god you're a father that i want to pursue i want your purity i want your holiness by faith i don't know what to do next but i'm taking a step closer to you i'm going to get in my word and trust you when you say do these things i'm going to apply what i'm learning guess what your your steps towards purity your steps in faith towards holiness god is going to honor if you're thirsty if you're hungry and you really want change he will feel you right now yes change your direction if that's you and you're going the wrong way have a change of mind and a change of heart that's your repentance you believe right now you change your way the way you look at sin the way you look at god and you begin to say i need you god and cry out on the to the name of jesus christ of nazareth there is no other door that can get you to the father there is no That's side right. window there's yeah. no back door you cannot break in you have to go through the narrow path the gate jesus is the gate and the way is the narrow path that leads to life how do you do that deny yourself daily mm. begin to put his will over your will it's so simple don't ever let anybody complicate the message of salvation the gospel the good news Here's the, here goes the good news there's hope yes there's hope there's hope for you there's hope for me and his name is jesus christ of nazareth man thank you jesus and i'm praying for everybody out there those who struggle with addiction those who struggle in in, in, in identity those who struggle with with believing what god has for you those who struggle with forgiving people right now god release all of heaven over mm. your children Lord. thank you jesus bless those hearts soften those hardened yes. hearts god Give them hope, Lord. Some of them feel like, man, I can never be brother, bro. I can never be Pastor Nestor. You're right, man. I can. I don't got it all together, man. You're looking at people who don't have it together. He holds us together. Yes. We're just like you. Ain't nobody better. There's no celebrities in heaven. Your title doesn't make you any better than any. Whether you're a prophet, you're the, whatever you call yourself, it doesn't make you any better. When we get to heaven, he's not going to call you prophet. He's not going to call you pastor. You are a servant of God. You are That's a child right. of God. And he loves you. So Thank you, Jesus. Let's just get that out in the open, man. We're all the same. Yes. We all need one person. Person, Jesus Christ. Yes. We all come Thank to you. him right now. And I pray for every heart, this every family that's listening right now. Everybody, yes, Father God, Lord. release all of your provision over the vision that you've given us for this assignment at Sunnyside in Houston, Texas. Father God, we acknowledge you in this, Lord. It wasn't to get on here and just say, Father God, will somebody please help us, Lord? We're asking for heaven's account to yes, be poured into us in right now. What belongs to heaven, Amen. God, you have it on earth. Mm. Release it right now Thank so you, we Lord. can go and be the hands and the feet, yes. whatever that is. God, even if it's one, three, ten family bags that we take, which I know would be more, but if that's all we take, well, so be it. Let the anointing go within ten bags, Father God, and just let, let, let you have your way. We say yes to what you have yes, for God. us right now release right now your provision release your protection release your anointing upon that place that before we even get there lord you are already dealing with households you are already dealing with mom Come and dad you're you, dealing lord. with children that are struggling god you're sending us there not just for music or testimony you're sending us there to put a blood stained banner in the middle of that neighborhood father god with the blood of christ so every demonic devil and demon in the spiritual realm when they see that the blood is covering this neighborhood the blood of jesus is covering these families right now the fear of the lord you say i put angels that encamp it around those who fear the lord let the begin right now begin to stir everything that is of your kingdom everything that belongs to you release it over this vision or release it over this assignment right now in the name of jesus yes, and God. silence yes, every God. voice that rises up against Come on. your your Thank assignment you, silence every anything that would try to hinder the growth or hinder this assignment from from bringing glory to you right now begin to dismantle the principalities of darkness dismantle every wicked every wicked force that tries to come against this right now and i pray for healing 
healing. I pray for salvation, Lord. Let heaven come down to Sunnyside. Let revival come down Amen. to Sunnyside. Baptism come down to Sunnyside. The fire of God, the love of God yes. right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Release it. We yes. say yes to your ways, Lord. We say yes to who you are. Yes. Your army right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Have your way, King Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm reminded of, of something that I've, I've always I've heard and, and talked about is only what you do for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. I, I've, I, I've learned something about eternity is that eternity does have has no um, time. Time doesn't exist in eternity. So even if you live to be 130 years old, that's not even a second, a millisecond in eternity. So while you have your millisecond of time here on earth, what are you going to do with it? Is it going to be wasted on things that don't matter? Or are you going to do, are you going to use every single bit of the time that you have here to glorify his name? That's the only thing that's going to matter. That's the only thing that's going to last. I just wanted to share. Amen. That. You know, man, I think sometimes, I don't know, personally speaking, I, I feel like we struggle because we think this life belongs to us. You know what I mean? That's why he says that in order for you to, to find your life, you gotta lose it. Yes. You know what I mean? And those who who, who wanna who wanna keep their life, they they won't they won't get it because we consistently think that we have something that we need for ourselves opposed to the Creator. Like whenever we we get to a place where we understand that our life is just for Him. Yeah. Like it's just to glorify Him. Right. It's just to be surrendered to Him. It's just to be in love and in obedience to Him. Like things change, man. Like He provides everything. Our our problems become minimal you know he's he's fulfilled in our lives like but it's a struggle because we think that we know what we need or sometimes we we encounter or we face these real life problems that that bring trials and bring storms and and bring heaviness and bring burdens into our life and we try to solve them or we try we we, we think that we know a way out or we want to drown and we want to numb them but but christ is the answer man yeah he is the way right the way out he's the truth of how to get out and he's the life for getting out so like you just, just Putting our hope and faith in Jesus and understanding that there's no better place than our life can be or anybody's life can be than in the hands of the Creator, man. And, Amen. You know, man, you know what's crazy? When you said that, it, it reminds me, like even on this platform, it's like 348, right? And some of you, you know what's, you know what, you know what's the crazy part is some of you that are listening right now, you feel like God is your enemy. Mm. Like you go to church, you wear a Christian shirts, you tap into Christian music, like you're amongst the things of God, but you treat him like he's like he's your enemy. Your mother-in-law is not your enemy. Your neighbor's not your enemy. Your pastor's not your enemy. Satan is your enemy. God is not your enemy. Quit treating him like he's your enemy. He's on he's for you. And if he could be for you, who could be against you? That's right. Yes, and so the, 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 the things that he that he structures your life to follow, like when it comes to to uh it's not for rules, right? He says, stay forgive people. Why does he for, say forgive people? Because he doesn't want you to hold unforgiveness where unclean spirits can attach to you. He doesn't want you to walk around with a heavy heart, a concrete heart, where it's hard for you to receive real love from people that, that care about you. And when he says, you know, to be generous, when he teaches all these things, he's not trying to make your life hard. He is not your enemy. He is trying to bless you in ways you can't see and it takes it takes you trust in him have faith in him man so i pray right now for those who are out there that are listening man that you know god is for you i believe that Amen. i believe there's someone out here you, you need to just believe that with all your heart and take it personal god is for you he's not against you amen 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 man thank you jesus god is good y'all <laughs> so we're gonna see you in we're gonna see you uh ernesto Y'all coming on the 30th? Aren't you coming yep. to Conroe? Oh, I, well, we'll see. We never know. We go wherever <laughs> we go wherever the wind blows us, man. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm excited about that crusade. Oh, look, keep us in prayer, bro. Don't forget that God has had the privilege to adopt a Polanski unit. Mm. So next month in Ooh. April, we go every every other Wednesday to go teach and build a relationship in Amen. there. Amen. Yeah, so y'all gonna know Polanski. Polanski is a uh, Polanski is a unit, um, a, a prison that they go to and visit. So, so look, we just saying we y'all like man, y'all keep saying kingdommusic.org. We telling y'all that the, we telling y'all what's going on. We, we we gonna keep on going. So now we we would uh, been able to adopt a prison that we can go to every other week and build relationships for not just when they're in prison. I was at the state fair. I was at the wow. Texas fair one day. 
and we're going through and there was this long line for this 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 little uh some dessert that had went viral on tiktok right yeah and so i was like oh i want to go get in this line and i looked at the line and the line, and the line went down and around <laughs> and back and back. i looked at my wife i said it don't look like you're gonna be able to try this today babe this, <laughs> this line crazy and so i'm walking up and i see a little break in the line i'm like oh maybe this and the, and the guy stopped me he goes, hey hey bro hey bro the line all the way over there i said oh shoot and he stops and he looks at me and he goes, Hey man, you a part of Kingdom Music, right? And I said, Yeah, he said, Man, y'all came to the prison that I was out. I just that I was at. I just got out a couple of weeks ago. Man, y'all encouraged me to get my relationship right with Jesus, man. And look, he, he goes, look at me. Wow. He said, It ain't much, but look, I, I I got a job as soon as I got out, man. God had favor on me. Man. And it blessed me, man. I gave him a hug, encouraged him. Uh, and it just let me know, like, man, look, you don't always get to see the fruit of what you're going out to do, but sometimes God will give you a little glance every once in a while. And it, and it blessed me to see that. So yeah. when we say, hey, go to kingdommusic.org and go give here, we telling you because we know we we know how God uses these these things to encourage people who might be struggling in their walk and and God shows up right there in the nick of time. God mm -hmm. used God used Antoine, God used Brian, God used Ernesto, God used Jamie or Portia or Monica. Or these random moments, God used them in this moment to speak life wow. into somebody at the perfect time. You know how many times God spoke life into me at the perfect time? Amen. We had a brother, you, we had a brother who was a part of this ministry that passed away some years ago, Lalo. Lalito. And God used to speak to Lalo directly. I would be going through something in my mind, or struggling in my walk, or uh, not necessarily struggling in my walk, but just struggling. Like, man, God, am I doing what I'm supposed to do? Man, it never failed. My, that phone would ring. Yep. And Lalo would be like, man of God. Lalo was awesome. I just wanted to let you know, in case nobody told you, that you're loved and you're important, and God loves you, man. You're important to the kingdom. I cry every time, man, because God will speak that perfect word at that perfect time and use that perfect person to do it right there in the nick of time. Yes. So, Amen. We're praying that on April 13th that we that we are able to go do that and, and maybe plant some seeds, or maybe God, maybe there were some seeds that's already planted. And God just wants us to go over there and and, and nur water. nurture that and water that. <laughs> And you know, and um, and, you know, and be there for them and cultivate that. You know what I mean? So, you know, once again, those are asking how they can help. www.kingdommusic.org. Yep. Kingdom you can go to KMF Family, capital KMF Family on the Cash App. You'll see Brian Trejo on there. Um, man, thank you guys, man. Thank you, Nesto, man. We want to get on here and just cash vision what we're doing. That's it. Uh, if there's ministries that are want to lock arms, yep. Nestro, where can they get with you if they want to lock arms for the 13th and yeah, the 14th? This is good. So they can lock arms with you, uh, with us when we get there. Other ministries. You can, you can message me on Facebook or you can email me at Ernesto at GetRap.TV GetRap.TV And that'll give you an opportunity to, to partner with us, uh, meet yeah. us over there. We, we need hands and feet. We need it. Trust yeah. me. Everybody, Nesto cut his hair and I'm so super excited he <laughs> cut his hair he was looking like pony boy yeah. <laughs> oh. oh my goodness hey, you ain't seen me since my haircut huh? make, it make, make, make it make sense make it make sense oh my goodness oh brian brian couldn't yeah. wait to play with his machine over here <laughs> now he's gonna mess it, it up. I'm, oh try, I'm, I'm trying to do the clap and it won't do it. But I wanted to give a round of applause for next time. Hey, <laughs> hey this is the first time I see you with your haircut, though, for real. Yeah. I didn't even know. Yeah, bro, I don't know what to do with this, bro. That boy hair was getting long. He didn't know. He was putting the three ponytails randomly. He was looking like a, <laughs> a, a <laughs> fire we're gonna, him, we're gonna call him Chongo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nah, but I love My you guys. My wife was there we love you too, man. Love you we love you guys, love man. Shout out to the whole KMF, the body of Christ, every Thank single one guys. of you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Prayers, blessings over each of y'all, man. Uh, we love you guys, man. Y'all have an awesome night tonight. This is Give Him Heaven podcast with Pastor Ernesto, Brother Antoine, and Brother Brian, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus' amen. name.